YouTubers and welcome back to the channel. I'm going to try and help you out with my favorite shortcuts, things to help you go faster at your job using Microsoft Visual Studio. If you happen to use Visual Studio, this these things will help you. I use these things all the time. All right, now there's millions of shortcuts out there and you're going to have to find them for yourself, ones you like. You may not like mine, you may already know mine, but here I am trying to help you anyway. All right, so we know that we copy and cut, copy, paste all the time. So I'm sure hope you're not doing this thing where you go copy and right click paste. I hope you're not doing that. So you need to learn these shortcuts and you can find them right here. Usually they're right next to over here. You see under edit, you can see control A for select all. That's a good one to know. Control C, control X, control V to paste, control C. Let's try that right now. So you need to just practice these and just use them automatically. They just automatically happen. Control C. And then control V, I just pasted it. And then control X, uh, I think that copies it. And then I pasted it in control V, okay? You need to use these shortcuts if you're not already. Now that was the easy one and trust me, they'll get better from here. That one is pretty straightforward. All right, now the next thing is often you'll have, will be working with a huge project with maybe one solution and a whole bunch of projects and a whole bunch of folders and a whole bunch of files. And what you'll have is you'll have all these files open with these tabs right here. And by the way, while we're here, remember you can do a, uh, first of all, save all and save. So I usually save all. You can right click and do close all documents, but this, you can do a close all documents. This one is really handy too, because I like to keep things nice and neat and clean. I don't understand those people that have like a tons and tons and tons of tabs and icons on their desk. I can't stand that clutter. Clutter messes me up. So anyway, this is a nice, nice little thing. You can go close, close all documents. But anyway, so what we're doing is we're going to track, if you don't turn this on, and I don't think it's on from the default, but if you have lots of files and folders, you sometimes you want to go over here and look and see where they are in the folder system. Now pretend like this is a very small project, but you're often going to work with much bigger projects and they're going to have lots of files and folders. And if you click on a file, you, you want, or I want to track that item over here. So you go under Tools and Options, and you can go over here under Projects and Solutions. Yeah, I know it's kind of hard to find, but if you go down here to call what's called Track Active Item and Solutions Explorer, I think that's off by default. If you click it, every time you click on a file, it will highlight your file here, even if it, the folder is closed. Uh, some people don't like this. I don't know why. But watch, I click on this, and it opens the folder and goes right to that file. It's really nice to be able to pop to that. I like that it does that. All right. Now, the next thing is the search bar. Actually, it took me forever. I just recently found this. So remember how I just did, I had to go to tools, options, and look through all that? Well, if I know I'm tracking active item, what I can just do is type it right here in the quick launch up here in the top right. Track, active, and guess what? It comes up right there for me. It'll open up my options and go straight to it, and there it is. So much easier. So what if we wanted to change maybe the background color of our our thing here. Let's go to fonts, fonts and colors, right? Now, while we're here, see, notice the quick launch shot us straight to where we are because look at this gigantic sets of options. I mean, you can go on forever. So once again, I'm gonna go up here to fonts. Now, you may want to play around with your colors. I see a lot of people with really weird colors, you know, like some people like the green and black and all. You might want a different, if you don't, I've heard that your eyes will do better if you have a different color background. So you might want to experiment with this. So sometimes what I'll do, especially if I'm bored, I'll come in here and pick a color for the background, maybe a light yellow or something. I'm going to add to my custom colors. I'm going to pick it and hit OK. And notice my background right here when I hit OK, it turns to yellow. Now, you may not like this color. It is too strong of a yellow. But we can go back to font. And I say, I just want maybe a very soft yellow. I'm going to bring this down and just barely be soft. And it might be easier on your eyes to do this. And then you can see the kind of contrast that you like. But you can pick your colors that way. Um, okay, so now another cool thing we can do, moving on to the next tidbit, is now you know how sometimes you want to like delete all the public 
say we want to delete all these publics right here, but how do you do it without clicking, deleting, clicking? Well, if you hold down the Alt key, you can select vertically up and down. See? Hold down your Alt key, and now you can do this. And now once you select it, you can hit Delete, and bang, they're all gone at once. That's pretty cool when you're working with these big files, like maybe, I don't know, JSON file or something, and there's there's a bunch of uh, weird, bunch of things you know that you want to delete. Like, I want to get rid of everything. I'm going to hit the Alt key. I'm going to get rid of everything down here and go way out here, and I'm going to hit Delete. And it would, it'll box select for you, and then you end up with this. Now, Control Z, I have that memorized. I don't even have to think about it. Control Z. And everything is back. Now, another thing I like to do, I don't like to look at code that I'm not thinking about. So sometimes you'll have this huge thing, a bunch of code, and you don't want to look at, see, if I'm looking at rectangle here, I don't want to be distracted by rectangle two and rectangle three. So you can collapse everything manually like this. Click, click. That's kind of a pain in the butt, isn't it? Now, if I hit Control Z, it will go back. Now, what if I wanted to just collapse everything all at once? You can go Control M, Control O. It's kind of like two-step process. Let's see if it's up here. Control M, Control O. All right, Control M, Control O, Control M, Control P. Okay, so let's go to something that has a little bit more code. And if I go Control M, so now we've got like a bunch of code. Pretend like we have this code. If you go Control M O, it'll collapse everything for you. And then you can go to the nice little. It'll collapse the, everything in the page you're looking at, this file you're looking at. Then you can open the one um, up, open up the things that you like. Now Control M and P will do the exact opposite. If you don't hit Control P. Hang on, control M, control P. It's t it's a two-step process. Control M and then control P. It'll expand everything for you. I, I use control M, O a lot. Control M, control O, everything gets collapsed. And then I start to look at code. Like I said, I, I keep things nice and neat. I only look at what I want to look at. If I see too much, I start to get a little stressed out. Kind of like kind of like I have to look at too much at the same time. So let's con collapse this with control, control M, control O. And that's how that works. Now, speaking of being nice and neat, it is so easy, especially if you have like an ASP dot, uh, an ASP HTML page, and you know how all everything kind of gets, the tabs get mixed up and messy, and you got too many things over here, not enough over there. Let's 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 do a Control M P. Let's open this up and show you what I mean. You're working. By the way, you can select and hit the Tab key and move the whole thing. All right, somebody, I see code like this all the time. It drives me crazy. You know, you'll see like a space here and a three spaces here and a space here. And a, oh, this is too far. And then somebody does like, if you do a shift, a shift tab, it'll bring it back the other way, right? Now notice I'm making a mess right now, okay? Uh, this is a mess. If I see code like this, I'll fix it. Also, by the way, notice how you're not using all these using statements and they're kind of gray. If you right click and you go to organize usings and you use, I use remove and sort, it will remove and alphabetize your usings. And I like a nice, neat, only having the namespaces that you need in your code and not having uh, all these extras in gray. I just do not want to see any extra code that I don't have to look at. Ever. All right, so this is a mess, right? Everything is messy. Watch this. If you do Control K, Control D, all of it will be tabbed just perfectly for you. Do you see how easy that was? Control Z, I'll put it all back. Now this is a mess. This is a mess. This is a mess. Shift tab, 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 shift tab. Now this is all a mess. I'm going to do a control K, control D. Everything goes back perfectly. I almost, I do that almost every single time I see somebody's messy code. And then I will come in here and I'll, I just, it just bugs me when I see spaces, uh, spaces, spaces, spaces. I get rid of all the spaces and I, I make it as, I aesthetically pleasing. I want to see things in nice little neat. Now I'm going to do a control M O and collapse everything. And now everything is nice and neat. If I even see a space right here, the first thing I do is, nope, I don't like that. It's almost like I need to do this. It's almost therapeutic. 
seriously, to clean it up. All right. Now, this one is kind of neat. Let's suppose you used... Let's suppose we didn't have a namespace up here that we needed. So I'm going to get rid of system. Okay? I learned this a long time ago. If you click on the item that has a little squiggly line, many times you can do Alt, Shift, F10, and it will come up and try to find it for you. And in that case, it said the first one that says system. Let's do that again. So if you ever have a squiggly line, squiggly line and it's looking for something you don't have, like let's do a, a list of strings. String x equals new list string. Okay, now notice... We have lots of squiggly lines here. I'm going to hit, click on the thing you want, Alt, Shift, F10. Now it springs up a little menu here, and I know that that system, guess what? I clicked on it, and it puts it up up here, and that disappears. Now I need a list. I'm going to go Alt, Shift, F10. I mean, you need to memorize this because it's freaking awesome. And it goes away. It, it adds what you need up here. It doesn't always work. If it can't find what you're looking for, it won't work, obviously. It may even try to create it for you, but that one is awesome. So thumbs up, uh, like, because I just gave you an awesome tip that I bet you you did not know that. I know that because I learned that at a conference. Now, it's all in there. It's buried in there somewhere, but somebody had to tell me at some point, and that's what I just did for you. All right, now, this is one I still have never quite mastered, but if you, of course, if you hit the end key, sometimes you're in a huge file. Um, if you hit home, it will jump to the first of the line right here. And you hit end, you can jump to the end. Home, end, home, end. See how the cursor jumps? Let me zoom in. By the way, to zoom in, you hold the control key and run your mouse. You know you're... I can't bring my mouse over here and show you. You know there's a scroll wheel. If you hit control and scroll in, you can scroll in and out real easy. So then you hit home, end, home, end, home, end. And you can uh, go to, to back and forth. If you hit Control Home and Control End, it'll go to the end, beginning and end of the document. All right, one more cool thing I'm going to show you. I probably there's more, but I'll make more videos. If I'll see how popular this is and see if you guys like it. Um, what is it? All right. Now sometimes you have you might have a big monitor and you want to easily split the screens, so it's nice and neat. Instead of doing this stupid thing where you're like doing all this like oh okay you're doing all this work you know like uh all right now i want to look at this on the side you know don't do all that stuff what you do is hit the windows key there's a little windows key on your keyboard that one that little window Hit the Windows key and your arrow. Hold down the Windows key and hit your arrow while you need a window selected. So you need your cursor in here. Windows. If you hit the right arrow key, it does that. If you hit the left arrow key, it does that. If you hit the up arrow key once, it does that. If you hit it again. All right. I'm going to hit Windows key up. All right. It's doing... You have to figure it out. But if you, if you hit the Windows key, it'll flip around and go around. So now if I hit... Let's say I have my instructional here. If I hit... Windows key and over here it'll split the screen so now I can easily do this if I wanted to rearrange that easily uh, this is in the way I was gonna try to do uh, what was split on the top and the bottom but it doesn't look like you can do it so if you hit the right key and then I'm gonna pick this left now I can, if I need to compare these two files for some reason, I can do it like this. But the Windows key is a nice little shortcut. All right, guys, that's it for tonight. I will try to put together even more of these shortcuts, but those are one of my favorites, and I hope they help you out with Visual Studio.